Hey guys and gals, uh, Jim here, and we're going to start a little series of videos. But, uh, I'm not sure how many um, I thought I could do this. Uh, one about the model about building it. Uh, this is a very difficult model to build if you're uh, um, uh, not an experienced modeler. Um, but uh, I'm going to probably break this down into a few more parts. Um, I think we're going to do a video on strictly the model. Uh, another video on um, what you need to know about building it. A lot of helpful information. And um, the, another video, I'm going to do a separate video just on with the lights. I'm not going to really go over how I lit it. Uh, it's basically just going to be a, uh, you know, just a bunch of shots showing you the model all lit up and stuff. Um, if there's anything that uh, I do in here, uh, I'm going to try to make these shorter than the normal maybe half hour long videos or 25 minute long videos they just take so long to uh upload and everything so that's why i want to break things up but i hope everybody um enjoys all the videos whether you you, you just want to see it with lights or, or or whatever but um i hope everything everybody views all the videos just uh just so you know um uh you know the work that's involved in it and everything and stuff like that and uh all that you know and uh, anybody that wants to find out more in-depth um information you're more than welcome to uh, send me an email uh you know if i uh, feel comfortable with it i'll exchange phone numbers and we can go from there there's a lot of things that most times are easier to explain over the phone talking person to person uh rather than just in the comments section where you don't really you know you can't write a whole book in the comments section i mean i mean sometimes people do but um there's a lot of things that are just easier to talk talk about in person over the phone and uh, you can give a better explanation and more in-depth details and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if, if, if I don't get into really how I lit it, how I did certain things on it uh, and all that, um, I don't want nobody to be offended and stuff. So um, this, 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 this is basically, this video is just mainly to show the ship little bit why i wanted to build it and stuff like that the next video it's going to probably be more about the build about the issues about the different things that you need to know to to be able to build the model and have it come out pretty decent um before we get going too far it's hard to see a lot of stuff and i'm not really set up to do uh um professional videos and all that but i try to do the best i can but um i just want to do uh so all the rigging is completely done on it you know i didn't leave anything off or nothing like that um but it gives you a better 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 view all the rigging on there and stuff and uh as i get different shots of it you can see there's a lot of a lot of rigging goes up and back through the main smokestacks and crisscrosses from one side to the other to the different uh, tie-off points and stuff like that um same with the small smokestacks there's some rigging that goes up along the side there. Them little, three little um, post arms, whatever, sticking up. I don't know what they're called. I'm not an expert on this ship, and I don't think there's too, there's too many people are because there's not even a lot of information on this on uh, the Internet as it was uh, a ship back in the, the later midnight uh, um, 1800s um, all up until almost the end of the 1800s when... Uh, the uh, the ship was actually dismantled. It was taken apart, and uh, the hull was used for uh, a, a different type of boat and stuff for uh, hauling cargo or something. But uh, they they actually the ship didn't never get destroyed or you know um, fall to disarray, you know, fall apart or nothing like that. It was actually dismantled and used for other purposes. So um, but anyway, the model it's big overall. I hadn't got out my tape measure, but I know the model does measure 22 inches, whether it's from stern to, to bow or from the stern all the way to the end of the gangplanks that hang off the end. Um, it's roughly a little over 6 inches wide and probably close to uh, 8.5 to 9 inches tall at the top of the smokestacks and everything. Um, eventually, I will be uh, doing a water di diorama display base for it. And... Um, Pretty much that's why I want to do some videos now rather than just the finished model. Because actually the water diorama, about where that stick is coming up to the bottom of that, the, the deck, that's about where it's going to sit in, in, in reality as far as the, in, the water level. So you're going to very see very little of the paddle wheel. Now the paddle wheel, 
does work and all that and um got that part the rudder that works so all that's right um a little shot of the shot of the back of the model you got the extra little lifeboat back there you got all that Surprisingly, I built a lot of sailing ship models through my years of modeling way back in the 80s and that. And uh, to me, the rigging was the easiest part of this and all. So I do have all the flags on there that came with the kit, although uh, they came as decals um, for flags, uh, pendants and stuff like that on, uh, on masts and all. I don't prefer decals. Uh, they uh, they do get brittle. They fall apart. They crack on you and stuff. I uh I re recopy them and print them out on paper on my printer and stuff. So um, I do save the decals in case I got a use for them for something else down the line. But I just, I, I, re I redo all the flags usually for any type of ship model um, and print them out on paper and stuff. And if the model doesn't come with none, I just go online and look for some and, and, and uh, knock them down to whatever uh, scale I need them for and stuff. Um, and there's the front of the model. You see a lot of the, a lot of the rigging there. Um, these little cross pieces, wooden, uh, wooden, uh, uh, pieces, those are, uh, I, I just, I made those from, uh, uh, strip styrene, cut, cut them down to size I wanted them, uh, otherwise the rigging would have just come straight down on a triangle from way up on the top of the boom and stuff. Um, I did fabricate this whole section here, they, these, uh, these boom arms, they would have mounted way up there, and it would have, would have been either straight out or way to hell up there, which wasn't wasn't correct with a lot of the pictures. Um, there's really not no information on this. There's a couple of videos that guys that built this, they didn't go through all the you know the the detailing or nothing like that. There's um, a bunch of stuff on uh, if you Google stuff and look up the subject matter. There's a lot of what I what I based it on was um. Um, a lot of the, uh, professional ship models, like, you know, guys that build museum quality models that actually get put it, put in museums and stuff. I, uh, use those type of, uh, websites for a lot of, a lot of, uh, information and just helping getting the model built pretty good. Um, no two models that I f did find even on the museum quality models that were mainly built out of wood. No two of them had the pa same paint scheme. You know, like I says, back in the 1800s like that, they didn't keep information. Uh, there, you know, there's not even any black and white photos. I think on YouTube I found one video. It was basically a documentary about the race that it had against the Natchez. That, uh, there was a lot of money throughout, the, throughout the, um, the land that was bet on that race to see which one would win and stuff and that. Um, but other than that, it just had a still picture about black and white, kind of like an artist sketch and all that, so... Yeah, uh, it's pretty much a um, you know build it build it how you might think it would look you know if you were around back in the day and I don't live too far from uh, Peoria Illinois and uh, they do have a um, it's a stern drive uh, steamboat and all that it's called the Spirit of Peoria there's plenty of videos on YouTube on that and um, I go every time I go down that way to the Bass Pro Shops it sits right across on the Illinois River in the t in the city of Peoria. And uh, it's a triple decker and all that. And um, even other videos I've seen, like uh, different uh, river boats along the Mississippi that are, you know, you're still in existence or have uh, been built as replicas, you know, true to true to life replicas. Uh, the same like they were back in the day. Most everything I see is always it's, they're all they're all white with a lot of red trim and everything. So that's the that's the route that I went. Um, this kitten by no means is. Uh, Molded with much detail as far as accuracy, as far as the cabin walls. Uh, I see some of uh, some some pic pictures and stuff of like um, um, art art you know museum models and stuff. They got like you know the the tongue and groove type uh, siding and stuff. And uh, I wasn't gonna start getting carried away with detailing this up and and scribing lines and all that stuff. Um, you know even the paint paint callouts they gave you in the instructions as far as paint the decks gray. Um, this actually got a wood, 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 uh, board, board, wooden boards, uh, type deck like you would on, uh, most ship models and stuff. The same with these, uh, on the gang planks and all that. I went with the regular, uh, wood, Model Master wood paint. 
um, uh, this top deck here. It's not scribed out or nothing with any kind of boards or detail, but I went with the wood on there. I was going to try to scribe it, but like, again, like I said, this is a model. I wanted to build it, do a good job building it, but I wanted to light it and have that be the main main, main attraction, you know, the main thing that this model has going for it and stuff. Um, and then the small ropes up uh, top in that, I did those with a uh, just pretty much a, a dark green, testers dark green, flat green and stuff, and uh, um, all that. And uh, to me, it looked pretty good and stuff. If you want, I, I, I built it over the Christmas holidays from uh, started a couple weeks before Christmas and finished it up a couple couple days ago um i kind of call it the christmas ship because of the, the red and green colors on it that i used and stuff and it's pretty cool and stuff and um uh it's, it's it is a pretty cool detailed model it's just a real hard model to build for in you know even for me being a modeler with all the years of experience i've got uh i found it found it very challenging and everything and stuff and um but the reason i wanted to build it i've always had a fascination growing up in chicago uh, not far from the Lake Michigan on the southwest side. Um, I used to hang around the lakefront in the years when I was dating and stuff. We'd go down to the lakefront on summer evenings for dates and do different things. So, uh, you know, seeing different boats come into the lake for uh, for for display in different exhibits uh, and taking a lot of boat rides in the in the summer evenings on along the lakefront to see the skyline up and back. And uh, a lot of trips they took you down the Chicago River and everything. Um, so these, these, these boats always had a special, um, place in my heart and, uh, I was always fascinated them from the time I was a little kid as well as, um, the old sailing ships, you know, that they call them the tall ships and everything. We used to get a lot of those coming to Chicago. I've actually been, uh, on the, um, the bounty that they used in filming Mutiny on the Bounty to remake with Mel Gibson that used to be docked down in St. Pete's at the Municipal Pier. Um, that one was lost quite a few years back. They went out, took it. They were used to use it for some type of training uh, exercises and stuff and uh, for, for uh, young guys that were getting into that type of stuff. And um, uh, there was a pretty bad storm and it was lost out in the, uh, in the Atlantic. So, um, or, or the Gulf one or the other, but I'm not too, too sure that's been a while. But uh, it's a shame they lost that one because that was really something cool and stuff. And I'm glad I got to go on it when it was still... Still around and docked there for uh, public display and, and tours and all that and stuff. So, um, But other than that, that's that's one of the main reasons I built this model. Because uh, I just have a fascination with these type of boats, you know. Um, you'd say I like to build boat ships. I'm not, like, not so much, you know, military type stuff. But this is more this is more in my comfort zone. I haven't built like something like this for a lot of years. So that was one of my motivations to build it and stuff. So, um uh, the Ravel did make a, a similar model. It, this is 22 inches. The Ravel's model was a lot different scale. It was uh, 15 inches. Uh, no, in no way near was the same mold because of the size difference. Plus, it was uh, I, I've seen pictures of the sprues and uh, the pe the pieces are molded way differently as far as assemblies and the way they mold different parts. The way they go together, they're molded a lot differently uh, as far as sections like the Ravel kit. This wall and this here curved area, it's just one flat piece. Where on this kit, this is one piece down here, and this whole, almost you want to call it a wheel well, where the paddle wheels sit inside. That's all. That's all molded one piece. It's completely like night and day difference between the Ravel kit and this being a Lindbergh kit. So, but um, it's that's basically my model. Um, other side. Other side's pretty much all the same and all that. So, uh, not much difference. We're not going to be doing too much spinning around with it and all. The, uh, the model itself, all, all the, uh, all the windows down here on this lower, lower cabin and at those windows were in there molded, you know, molded as open windows. All the windows along this mid-level all the way around those are all molded in windows in the back uh up here down there were molded in as well as these here and all the ones up on top in the cab in the wheelhouse um the windows back here it's kind of hard to see them because it's covered up by the gates and everything but the windows down here three of them there's one back underneath here 
and all these windows here those were uh, those were just molded as window detail but they weren't uh, they weren't open so I drilled those all out to um, you know make it look a lot better otherwise it would have had a lot of lighting up here and stuff but not much back here and here and then all that so I wanted I wanted to look wanted it to look pretty decently lit up so I went ahead and drilled all these out they're, they're pretty tiny openings and these are these are a little bit better to actually get in there and do them and stuff um, what else can we say about it uh, um, I did fill them all in all the windows are filled in with canopy glue that's what I was gonna get to um, I filled them in from the inside after everything was painted and uh, then when I started assembling all that um, they're all filled in with canopy glue those are a little bit harder to see down in that mid deck than the mid level ones but uh, those are all done too as well as ones in, in, uh, in that there area um, letters I painted uh, their raised letters and, and they're like embossed with a, with a higher outline than, than, than the, the, the center of them I did uh, did paint them all red first and then I took a Sharpie, it's kind of got like a chisel point, so it comes to a real fine edge, almost like a straight edge would be. And uh, I was able to uh, just pick out the uh, raised surfaces, the raised edges around each letter, and hide, uh, highlight them like that. A uh, word of advice, if you do use a Sharpie for, on any types, type of metals, um, it is an ink, it doesn't dry quickly. Um, especially on plastic, it's made more for porous materials it'll it soaks in and, and dries quicker um if you use a sharpie for anything it doesn't matter what color it is and you go to, to spray your clear coats over it or anything real light mist for the first coat uh if you do a regular coat like you used to to cover the whole area r r real thorough and then uh do another coat afterwards that uh, when you do that first coat what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to make the ink start running and you're going to have streaks running all over from your black Sharpie ink. And uh, it's very easy to clean up. Uh, I'll be doing a video shortly, shortly not too down, down the line in the future, all about what I use to um, strip paint off a model. All you guys that, I'm, I'm just going to say one thing. You guys that soak your model in the purple bats, might take a day, might take a couple days. I can do a model in five minutes. That's no lie. I, I discovered the, 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 the process by accident about 20 years ago. And uh, uh, since then I changed the product that I use. But because uh, it, it, it's cheaper nowadays for what I use. But I can strip a model down in 20 minutes. In fact, in, in, in five minutes. In fact, when I did my uh, aircraft carrier in Emmets, I didn't like the way my, uh, um, uh, my deck came out. The, you know, the... the, the uh, the whole deck, the, 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 the you know whatever you want to call it, the uh, um, where all the planes you know take off and land and stuff. It came out looking like garbage. It was too dark. Um, I, I I tried to do different patchwork areas on it, different shades of grays and stuff, and I just didn't like it. And it's like okay, uh, what am I going to do now to get rid of this paint? Well, I forgot about my old uh, throwback. I use tur pretty much it's turtle wax bug and tire remover. I spray it on the model, I let it set for about 10 to 15 seconds, I take a pot paper towel and it starts rubbing right off. The paint comes right up, rinse it off, if you got to respray it a second time, wait about 10-15 seconds and you can wipe the paint off. In order to get into the little nooks and crannies, get yourself a nice uh, soft bristle brush and uh, it'll, it'll, take, it'll take the paint right off. I'm not kidding you. I could uh, mess up a paint job on a, on a, on a model now. And in another hour, I can have it all back in business, redone, repainted, and stuff. And once you're done with the uh, bug and tire remover, um, go back and uh, wash it off just like you would taking parts out of a new model that you're going to be building and stuff to get rid of all the residue and the oils and the greases from the uh, from the mold release agents and stuff like that. And you're back in business. I've used it on clear parts. It does not scratch clear parts. It does not scratch uh, regular parts. There's no kind of gritty gritty uh, ingredients in it. It's a, just a smooth. It's a spray. It comes out just like uh, almost like a, um, a watered down embers glue would be. You know, it's it's you know real liquidy and stuff. Um, but it, it works wonders. You'd be amazed at how easy it is to strip paint off a model compared to what you guys do with the the purple bats, so called purple bats and stuff, the purple purple cleaner stuff and that. Uh, um, 
give it a try, you know. And uh, I, 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 I challenge anybody to prove me wrong. But anyway, um, getting back to this, um, that's pretty much about the ship, okay? Um, the next video I'm going to do, it's going to be on building it. Um, a lot of issues and stuff like that. So, like I said, I wanted to keep these videos short and not run out of time and get interrupted by my camera kicking off and having to restart the next video and stuff. So, we're going to call this video done for now. And then we're going to come in and uh, that. And I wasted a lot of time at the end talking about the uh, paint removing stuff. That doesn't have anything to do with this model. But uh, we'll get back to this model in the next video and stuff. And um, like I said, uh, it'll, it'll, I'll have a video s soon enough on the on model being, you know, with the lights on. But um, bear with me and give it a chance because there's a lot of things I want to explain. Because there's a lot of guys since I bought mine. There's a lot of guys that have left me in the comments that they bought one, this and that. So there are a lot of people anxious in seeing it. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys that are going to be interested in what I've got to say about how, you know, the, the troubles with building it were. So um, we'll see you soon in a couple. So till the next time, thanks for all my subscribers. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Thanks for all the uh, nice comments you guys li like, leave me. Thanks for the uh, hitting the like button. And uh, I enjoy looking at all your models, too. You guys are all doing some fantastic modeling out there and stuff. So uh, we'll see you soon. Till the next time, take care. Bye.